What's up, Dang Dog Blog fans? Pete here, back again with another video review. This week we have Hot Toys Iron Man Mark III diecast variant. Uh, not to be confused with the original release of the Mark III or the Mark III Battle Damage or the Mark III Repaint Stealth version that's about to come out. Uh, no, Mark III diecast. Uh, this particular piece right here is MMS 256. So Movie Masterpiece Series number 256, D07, or diecast number seven. Uh, let's take a quick look at the box before we get in too deep. Um, as most of you guys know, I mean, they're, they're box fans out there for Hot Toys. And uh, this is a nice one to be had uh, for sure. Uh, like the diecast series, it's a two piece um, box that comes up and down kind of about you know three quarters of the way down on the box itself uh, the top is covered with a piece of uh, you know cellophane that surrounds the actual car uh, sturdy cardboard and uh, it has the actual image of Iron Man printed on the top as well as the black base so it gives it kind of a 3d look really cool feature they've been doing this for quite a while uh, with uh, the diecast uh, series and it's really cool uh, the Sideshow sticker, uh, exclusive for the exclusive version of uh, this release by Hot Toys, which does include the uh, you know proof that Tony Stark has a heart uh, arc reactor piece in it. Nice little cool toy. We'll take a look at that real quick. So once again, Iron Man Mark III as uh, visualized at the end credits of uh, Iron Man the movie. Uh, Iron Man Mark III once again. The side, continuing on with this art deco. And then in the back, various numbers of people involved. Quick shout out to JC Hong, cool guy. Um, his, you know, very rarely do you see if somebody so high up in a large company of this magnitude uh, being extremely active on uh, Facebook. Um, warnings, choking hazards, where it's made, made in Hong Kong. Can't beat that. And finishing up. All right, let's go ahead and cut to the cardboard. All right, and here we are in your typical shoe box that's inside in the styrofoam. And let's go ahead and take this out right here. All the accoutrement of cellophane all over this bad boy. Take a lot of this stuff off. Nice. Go through all those in a second. There you got him, Iron Man Mark III diecast. Right now, I'm uh, popping in the batteries, uh, which can be a little pain if you don't have like a pair of tweezers on here with you, as uh, a lot of the, uh, the seasoned Hot Toys guys will know. Uh, it's it's just tough. Um, you know, you're obviously you're you're you have to work between sacrificing uh, a place to install batteries uh, at the same time. <clears throat> trying to conceal it so you don't see it uh, just because of the nature of these pieces I mean they are high-end um, you know collectibles slash toys slash you know some some people would want to go far as far as saying hey I want a goddamn robot for, for the price you know they scream bloody hell when you don't get it your way um, but you know it I, I always tell uh, you know guys on the forums whenever they break stuff. I've, I've you know luckily been fortunate enough not to really have issues outside of normal quality control issues. Um, you know they're being mass produced. There's no question about that now um, at a larger scale. So obviously you're gonna get guys assembling this in uh, in a you know obviously you know you got Monday mornings and Friday afternoons. No one wants to be there. I don't care how cool the job is. Um, and they're going to do a little quick, you know, they, they might strip a screw at the factory. They might install batteries wrong. They might install, uh, wiring wrong. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've read horror stories where guys have had to strip their figures apart. Um, 
by no means what I consider these extremely limited collectibles. Uh, because there are thousands of these made, but unfortunately I know guys that are in markets, uh, including um, you know Hong Kong where, where these are made, that have uh, defaulted parts and they can't get replacements um, in Hong Kong because hey, you know, by the time you figure out that you know your figure is damaged, um, you come back and you tell them and they, they either have the opportunity to replace it for you or they're sold out and they just give you a refund and you know imagine you're, you're weighing your options there would you rather have a just a damaged piece um a damaged piece that hey you know m might not light up or so uh, something along that lines than not having it at all so you know I, I know a lot of guys that have have had to have weighed that option and it's it's a sucky one to make there's no question about it um uh, you know, take the chance of trying to buy it aftermarket, which, you know, unfortunately nowadays, uh, people scalp you, um, even though they don't sell out of the product. You know, products might be sold out from, say, the original uh, manufacturers, say, as Toy Hunters or what a secret base in Hong Kong, but, um, you know, over here, Sideshow, they might sell out of something like an exclusive, uh, and you're, you're kind of up a river. It, it really does suck. So, and one last quick tip, when these first started coming out, um, as, and as far as anything that's battery powered and hot toys, definitely um, back then, batteries came preloaded. Uh, you removed a little quick plastic tab and you fired it up, but uh, th they are low quality batteries. Uh, they are extremely corrosive, as in they will instantly crack over you know, a period of days and weeks and eat into your toys. So, uh, after a while, a lot of uh, collectors got, you know, got got smart to that game and removed the batteries. And now, nowadays, Hot Toys is uh, smart enough to include it uh, outside. But there are still some head sculpts uh, that that still have the batteries in them sometimes, and I highly recommend removing them. And that that includes any other line of toys out there. Just you know, fire it up, see how the quality is, and then uh, take them out. It's just not worth it. All right, and here we got them all unboxed. Uh, as you guys know, unboxing a Hot Toys video, it takes a minute. Um, so here we have him with all his air flaps opened up as well as having the actual uh, Tony Stark or Robert Downey Jr. Uh, as Tony Stark, Iron Man. Helmeted head with the mask. This is Iron Man as we remember him in Iron Man 3, the traditional red and uh, golden suit. Uh, hot Rod, throw a little Hot Rod red on there as he told Jarvis to do. Um, as you can see right here, uh, the flaps are amazing. Um, a lot, a lot more intricate than the original release, uh, which had pretty. I mean, it was pretty close to this, but you know, as you can see here, the little airfoils as well too, which it's a pain to remove the actual plastic holding it around it. But just take your time. That's what I keep telling people. It's a beautiful piece. Uh, once again, Hot Toys does a phenomenal uh, job with the actual. Uh, likeness of uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Um, the, I, I mean, as, as many as Iron Man's have they've done with the uh, the helmeted head, uh, you know, with the reveal head, I should say, uh, and face sculpt. Uh, um, they 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 have some good practice on it. You know, there are a lot of different Iron Man variants out there based off of the movie, um, including just the Tony Stark figure by itself without the Iron Man suit from uh, Iron Man. Well, they did it in one for the flight test. Um, I don't believe they did one and two, uh, and part three, of course, they did the, uh, the, uh, the mech test one, so it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. As a lot of you guys know, uh, this one comes with the helmeted, um, without the face reveal as well as the, uh, the face reveal piece. Um, also included are, uh, different hand poses, which we'll go through right now real quick. Um. So you're gonna have your two blaster hands um, as well as two fisted hands. So a total of six pairs of hands. And I'll go ahead and lay these out as this is rolling by. See how that works out if it comes out in the shot. As well as the two fisted hands. Okay. And then his hip flares, 
are included. Now in the original release, the hip flares were actually spring loaded uh, to pop in and out. A lot of people actually had issues with them uh, because the, the actual locking me mechanism to keep them locked in uh, would actually, you know, be fairly uh, fairly sensitive. So it was real easy to trigger it. If not, I, I don't know if there was actually braking issues uh, to where they would always be displayed, but I have the actual pieces for you to swap out to show right there. The two gauntlet missiles, uh, once again, uh, in the, I believe it was variant, um, the battle damage unit actually had them loaded inside the hand, spring loaded, and uh, I know I, on mine, uh, I actually broke this top piece off when I was trying to slide it open. I mean, nothing that like a little crazy glue wouldn't, couldn't help out at home, but it, it's not fun. And finally, the two shoulder mounted missile launch missiles. Once again, that was, if you, if for those that know, they were actually spring loaded and workable on the battle damage unit, which that is insane. And finally, for the exclusive edition, you have Tony Stark's, uh, you know, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. We'll put that right in the front. So that covers all the accessories outside of the actual base itself. Uh, Diecast series, I have yet to see a different base uh, with the exception of the, uh, the Age of Ultron unit, um, which it was in the Mark 43, um, has that this you know more of a diorama type base. Um, this is the unique one that does come with the uh, Iron Man 3 diecast right here. This is a plastic abdomen section designed to where you can take apart uh, this figure and build him together to put him in the uh, the all famous uh, you know ground and pound pose. This is uh, my first time ever doing a ground and pound. I've, it looks cool, but I've never been a be you know, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Cool, I guess I redid that. It's interesting to see that little piece. Yeah, it gives it a little bit more movement there. Here we are with Tony as Iron Man 3 diecast in his ground and pound pose. Um, everybody's got little tricks and uh, and what uh, different ways of getting him into that position because it's it's a little difficult. There's no question about it. You can see that's how it would actually look on the complete base right there. I know there I know there's ways to get him a lot tighter in there. Maybe his legs got to go out a little bit more. So we'll try. My only thing is the knee in the back needs to go back just a tad more. Almost looks like he's running there. That's, that's as close as I'm going to get. I'm not going to fuss with it too much. I'm not real crazy about putting him in this ground and pound pose. Um, so as you can tell, what's different with this piece versus some of the older Iron Man pieces, the more recent older Iron Man pieces, I can take that back in the diecast, is uh, the abdominal section. It's non-adjustable or uh, no articulation. Usually there's an ab crunch there, which you know usually allows you to move them in and out, side to side. You really can't do that here. Um, with this replacement part of the abdomen here, uh, allows you to get him into this cool pose. But you know, for me, this piece here, there's there's already so many Iron Man threes out there, um, or Mark threes. I should take that back. Um, you know, this one is more of a stoic. Um, I, I'm gonna put him in what we call the museum pose. A lot of the uh, the Hot Toys collectors know where the museum pose is. It's just your basic look, hands to the side, not not really action. Maybe you know, you might have his hands balled up in the fist, but that's about it. Uh, just because of uh, the, the, like I said, the stoicness of uh, this piece, it's a lot more pristine than the uh, the, the latter two, uh, latter few releases of the Mark III itself. Um, so let me turn off the middle here. Hope my camera got. See if that changes anything. So that, that's really it. You know, as far as articulation, um, you can see here. I'll go over that real quick. <laughs> Back with the Iron Man 3, we're going to go over a little bit of articulation real quick. There's a million, ten videos out there that covers articulation. Everybody pretty much knows it. And once you get your figure, always read your instruction manual. Uh, I can't stress that enough. It, 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 you know, it goes into all the finer, intricate details of uh, what you can, cannot do, the limitations of each angle. Uh, so I went ahead and removed the chest armor as well as the abdomen and front armor. Uh, Side note, you do want to remove those two whenever you're doing the uh, the abdomen replacement uh, to go to the ground and pound pose. Um, 
the two here, unlike the old pieces, uh, I mean the recent pieces that were magnetic, uh, just like in the past, it's just two tabs here and a little two guide peg here. Uh, so remove one, I mean, you know, kind of pull one side out and get it out of its home and then work the other side out and it pops right out. Uh, same thing for the bottom piece here, just nice two little tabs. So careful when taking them on and off as uh, if you do it a lot over time, uh, that's not gonna go on without some sort of glue. Um, so um, outside of that, the arms do move 360. It does not have, um, it does not have, oh, I'll take that back. Uh, it does not, yeah. So unlike the 42 and the 43, uh, it does not allow for the arm to move inside and outside uh, going in this direction uh, from the socket. Uh, once again, the shoulder pad is movable. It does not have a lot of movement up and down. It's just the ball joint there. Um, the elbows are double jointed. Uh, seems that you can get a little bit of a bend out of it, about 45, maybe 50 degrees of bend. Um, the wrist, once again, is on a peg. Uh, traditional locations as far as the battery and the power on off. Um, this side here, they do come with, like as we discussed earlier, it does come with six uh, total hands or three total sets uh, this set right here or this one hand right here is the uh, fully articulated with the fingers and this one right here being the uh, oop, don't have it on all the way being the uh, the fisted hands um, the last set of hands is the typical repulsor hands um, I'll show those real quick right here uh, real cool scene if uh, obviously you want the repulsors you know like he's about to fire it up you know um, Outside of that, the head does move 360 on the post. Um, it is double-ended um, ball joint, so obviously that means it pivots up top as well as down low. The lower side more of a front back, not so much necessarily a side-to-side -side movement. Um, the leg, once you get the two flaps up here, and be careful uh, because if you don't move these up and you're moving up, you can damage the paint here a little bit. Uh, with the leg, you can get it up to about 90 degrees here, come back down, same thing uh, for the back side, I'd say before, uh, not too much if you move it off to the side, careful, once again, you wanna uh, avoid rubbing the paint. Um, now to get it in the ground and pound pose, there are two buttons located in the back. So counting down from the gold, uh, from the gold of the middle portion here, right underneath the battery pack, there's one, two, and then three and four. So it's actually the fourth button here that you press down and pull the top portion to allow the upper uh, torso to come apart from the abdomen. Uh, once again, remove the front chest and abdomen uh, display pieces before you even think about doing that. I would just remove any, you know, obviously the head uh, and that portion just to make it easier on you, uh, less falling parts and also have the flaps down so you don't damage them. Uh, once again, from the bottom coxal, yes, that is a actual term, the coxal piece here, there is one, two, same button right here. Oh, did I do that wrong for y'all? No, I'm sorry, I take that back. So the top piece to remove the top portion is the second portion, uh, two below from the red, and then the actual piece to remove the bottom uh, portion from the actual abdomen is the uh, second piece from the top or third total piece here. Uh, from the coxal piece. Now the coxal piece is actually another button. This button right here allows for the legs to drop down a little bit more. So hold that button down, it allows the legs to drop out um, to get you in the better ground and pound pose. So that will cover the articulation short of the foot here. Movement up, once again, three piece design on a uh, leg. Seems to not have as much lateral movement as the older pieces uh, left to right, but up and down phenomenally uh, with the flap to accommodate up front as well as the flap to accommodate out back. Um, once again, just like the old Iron Man uh, Mark III units, uh, the cool feature on the calves of these uh, is the intricacies. Um, takes me back to uh, whenever uh, Tony was in his workshop uh, working up uh, Mark II, going through all the actuators, the pistons and whatnot, uh, showing the intricacies inside the leg. This has always been a huge feature that has uh, draw me back to this uh, design over and over um, and Hot Toys has you know covered it phenomenally and then uh, there are several flaps that I want to cover real quick uh, there is a small one right here top piece that's one so two and before I do that three and careful because that separates into this little small airfoil and that's just one of them that's that's insane 
Look at that. And then there is another airfoil down low below beneath that. And then even another one right there. So, I mean, beautiful, beautiful piece. Well, um, I really didn't get, like I said, you know, I'm, you're, you're gonna see a lot of Hot Toys reviews from us in the very near future. I'm not gonna get real intricate as far as swapping out parts for you guys. Um, there's, like I said, there's a million and 10 guys out there that do does Hot Toys. I just wanna get a, a generic video out with our own interpretation, our, our little, uh, you know, slice of the pie, as you might say it, on uh, how we feel about these figures. It's more, I, I want to really, re, I do want to relay the important aspects of the Hot Toys to you guys because I feel that um, uh, I would be doing a disservice if I, I didn't tell a lot of people about the ins and outs of working on Hot Toys and how to properly handle them, play them. They are a toy. Um, and to me, this is playing with it. Um, this is what I do uh, on my off time, which I don't get a ton of, just like everybody else. I get a little bit on back half of Saturday, early half of Sunday. Um, and I, I pose them, I handle them, I take pictures of them. Uh, I haven't been doing a lot of pictures of late. It's just um, everybody's getting sick, so the clinic is busy. Um, but outside of that, um, but I just want to share with you the joy of my collectibles and my family's collectibles, my friends' collectibles. I mean, you, you'll see a lot more in the future from Dank's dog blog, not to get too far off on a side tangent, but you'll see you know, travel videos, you know, covering the geeky, the geeky from zero to hero, as far as small shop, big shops, food, uh, the things that we enjoy, you know, where to find toys, um, the things that we do as a group, you know, between uh, the camera guy, JHP, who is a huge Star Wars fan, just as I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and what we do, the, you know, the different things that are going on around our, growing around town in our various states, and even when we travel out, um, SDCC, uh, Emerald Con, um, <clears throat> you know, C2E2, the whole nine yards, and we'll start doing a lot more of that, and we'll get into more of that, but I, I just wanted to share with you our joy. You know, obviously, we're going to miss some parts, and um, if you guys want to see them, let us know, but otherwise, I just hope that you guys enjoy watching these videos as much as we enjoy making them for you guys. So, till next time, this is Pete, signing off for Dang's Dog Blog. May the Force be with you.